and I'm going to in the my coming lecture about the Spark data frames and working with the data frames and columns and rows of data frames and various operations with the data frames. So this is very very important part so, of, of Spark and we are going here to learn about Scala a little bit so it's easy for every data engineers. So let's cover in this chapter about data frame. So data frame again we are going to cover here like what is the data frame and what kind of uh, what is the schema in the data frame and the type of you know, you know that uh, data in the data, data frames so let's go to the uh, before the data frames what it was and how it could look like when we are using the structure api direct structure api if you see in my first example the parallel and the sequence and then we using map and reduce and maps and then the next part is using the data frame so both you see and see the difference okay so developer experience expressiveness simplicity and composability uniformity apart from improved performance uh, structure api data frames and data sets these are structure api facility writing computation with a common pattern used in data analysis consider the following example code written using rdt to compute the average rating of movie a gone with the wind of three analysis okay so this is the average there is a two way one is using rdd and another is using data frames looking these two codes listing clear that code snippet using data frame is far more readable and expressive the data frame snippets is construct rdd snippets that tell the spark what we want to do rather than how to do it so rdd is just saying how to do and data frame is saying what we want for example, using a data frame, we can construct a Spark compute average. When using RDD, we write code and logic compute and average. Another benefit using higher level API is consistency, uniformity, code across supported multiple languages like Python, uh, Scala, R. If you were to rewrite data frame, snippets Python, it would be re uh, resemble what we wrote in Scala, but may not be true if you are using the RDD. So this is the one difference. And there is a few, I mean, advantage is uh, most is the readability and expressive. Now, let's. Uh, so, this is the difference you see the data frame and you know the RDD. Let's uh, talk about the data frames in detail. Data frame is the most common structure API and represent a table and row and column of each column has a defined in a schema. So, if somebody asks you what is data frame, you can say it's a set of row and column and with the uh, with each column has a defined a schema. You can think of a data frame as a spread set, or if you work with Excel sheet, it's the same like a data frames, right? It's too big to fit in the single machine, so it has a part of a spread set across the cluster machine. So it is spread across the cluster. even if the spread sheet can be fit into a single machine, the desired computation takes too long, so the data has to chunk in the process the multiple machine in parallel. Another way to describe data frame is to think of them describe the table like collection with the well-defined row and column. Each column has the same type of data across the rows. In the sense of data frame, data sets is two which we will cover in later. Lazy evolution is planned to perform operation data distributions across the various machines in the cluster. So data frame we understand like row, column and schema and uh, it's a cluster computing and uh, computer in the parallel. The next part is again the data frame. Data frame is broken into a smaller part is called a partition. So data frame, data frame has a very very important part which we call a partition. Partition is a collection of row and column, and uh, I, I mean collection of rows from the parent data frame and reside in particular physical machine on the cluster. Data frame partition represent how the data physically distribute across the cluster of machine. This is part of the big data like partitioning. So. Number of partition is also data set parallel that can be achieved uh, in a Spark job with a single partition only the single executor can process of data even if several hundred are available so partition is very very important if you want to run in the parallelism Sim uh, similarly if there is a many partition but only single executor is available there would be no part uh, parallelism so this is a reverse way like if you have one partition and multiple machine available still it will run like one but even if you have one machine many partition then single execute then it will be also no parallelism so we need to choose that that way so now next part is the schema schema define the column names and type of data frames 
a schema can be manually defined or read from the source. A Spark allow a schema interface, a Spark read few rows and you know the past type of those rows and map in the Spark row. So if you not define uh, you know the interest schema or if you want to not define it will read a few rows and automatically it will convert into schema. We can also examine the interfered schema for data frame object using the schema method. So now this is uh, what the schema is and now we are going the inside the speaker, uh, uh, schema it has a row, uh, I mean data type so we Spark use an engine called Tungsten. Tungsten means is from various you know various uh, languages support all the, the uh, Spark type map the corresponding type of corresponding language such as uh, Java, Python, Spark will convert an expression written in one of the supporting language and equivalent to Tungsten represent of the same type. Tungsten engine is apply several uh, optimization and continually improve the Mac execution faster. So this is the data type Spark uh, convert automatically you know. First one is a byte, so uh, value assigned in the Scala byte. API is uh, data type dot byte type, sort, int integer type, long type, float type, double type, string type, boolean type, decimal type, and then few like uh, array type data like array, binary, timestamp. Uh, so these are very very important. Array type, map type, struct type, struct field type. Okay. So struct type is also important, it's complete row, map is key a value, array type is also sequence, and date, date type is also very important. Okay, so this is what we learned. Now let's do the uh, one example using the code. So what we are going to do here, uh, we are going to create uh, one data frame, and uh, then we are go going to do the average, right? So I'm creating data frame is a df and then we using spark session and create data frame methods and there is a method called sequence we are generating sequence okay inside sequence I'm generating two value name and you know uh, item uh, item one and then item item and item one and item one so i'm doing the average uh, something like item two its value is a two right and then this is sequence and if you want to convert into data frame to two data frame method and we need to give the column name first one is a item name and then second one is it or value I mean price item one price item two so we, we would like to see the average price right so this is the data frame is created here and now if you want to so then we can also show here is uh, spark data frame now we are going to do the group by right so value average df and uh, we use df is a uh, using previous data frame and the group by uh, if you see in the group by sequels, group by is uh, item name, name, we should use some column without like this. So column based name and uh, we want to do average of which column, value right. Average and we do aggregate and under uh, aggregate we use you know uh, average method uh, and now we will see the uh, value average df dot so so let's run this program so what i'm going to uh, do i created item one price uh, one item two price two and then it's giving some error so let's see what is the error is showing schema type is not supported schema type is not supported item one item two value so this one is one item this one is second item two df name Okay, so 2df movie name 
in value item 2 let's say item 2 okay yeah so I support the wrong data type that's why it should be same so item 1 price is 1 item 2 price is 2 right so if you take an average so item 1 and 2 will be 1 and 2 right but what I'm going to do here so the item 2 price 2 item 1 and previously we saw the data web but there is no average so why we did this so now what I'm going to do here I am creating one more item mm, similar to uh, I mean we want to learn about item and I'm creating three so item three price is somewhere is three somewhere is one yeah so now we are going to do item three one is four divided by two so it should come item one also two let's run this program hopefully it will run so first we saw three items and if you see here yeah so item two two because only one item two uh, one uh, two divided by one is a two okay three plus one four divided so what we did here is group by name name so same name is group by then average aggregate we use aggregate function based on value so it did average and if we can do also count i think let me try so count will be it will count one plus three is four and here it will be a two so this one uh, if you see i am putting into github so you guys can uh, you know download and practice uh, let me add here add uh, git add dot and then we need to type git commit minus m what misses average and then we do git push it will go to github whatever changes i made so i will provide this git into my link but let's look the our previous uh, results yeah so this is the three item and we use count here so you see the count is not counting one and two where is name average it for df or so so we just see if it can work this is three one three item one two count you we'll see average item one item three should work to df to so group high you can practice maybe count is not working column name is value group by is name item item one plus three should be you guys can practice this count i did average why it's not working you just check this one is correct two item oh item so it's not some we are not doing some we counting so one plus three it's just counting number of item if we do some then it will come four so it's a correct So count is like number of rows and sum is the actual value sum so you can see 4 and 2 this is correct so please practice and you can do a lot of reading from files and do some practice group by aggregate function we use some function we use so we import this function from spark first we create builder class then i run in the, my local machine and this is just simple code so in the a python also similar code you can try python or scala it's up to you thank you for watching please like and subscribe my channel